Good morning. Today is the 26th Sunday in Ordinary Time. Our Mass this morning is being offered for David Klein. This week's second collection will be for the Cemetery Upkeep. We are in need of donations and supplies for our upcoming Apple Dumpling Fest in November. Please, this is your parish. Let us all get involved. We are also in need of help to sanitize the pews after Sunday Masses. If you could give us five minutes of your time, that would be great. And please return the completed census form and your donation as soon as possible. Thanks to those who have already sent in their completed forms and donations. Pray to St. Michael the Archangel. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God be with you and we humbly pray. And to thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the world of souls. Amen. Please rise and welcome Father Bill. Upon us, and make those hastening to attain your promises 
heirs to the treasures of heaven. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen.
but afterwards changed his mind and went. The man came to the other son and gave the same order. He said in reply, yes, sir, but he did not go. Which of the two did his father's will? They answered the first. Jesus said to them, Amen, I say to you, tax collectors and prostitutes are entering the kingdom of God before you. When John came to you in the way of righteousness, you did not believe him. The tax collectors and prostitutes did. Yet even when you saw that, you did not later change your minds and believe in him. The Gospel of the Lord. I guess if I would play around with your minds a little bit and ask you how many types of Catholics there are, some of you would answer me theologically, well, there's two types of Catholics. There's Eastern Rite Catholics and there's Roman Rite Catholics. And in the Eastern Rite, there are ten minor divisions of the Eastern Rite or Byzantine Rite that profess the teachings of Jesus and their adherence to the Pope. And I say, yeah, that's the right answer, but it's not the one I'm looking for. So then, somebody else might raise their hand and say, well, then the two types of Catholics that you're looking for are the ones who are actively practicing their faith and the ones who are lax in their faith. Or the cake Catholics, Christmas ashes, palms, and Easter. And I have to say, yeah, you're right, but it's still not the answer that I'm looking for. And then my your classmate over here would say, well, then, Bill, what do you really want? And the answer to that would be, only I know the answer. And the answer that I would be looking for is there are sacramental Catholics and social Catholics. I don't think we ever thought of ourselves in that way before. Are you sacramental or are you social? And Jeannie's going to say, I love the party, so I must be a social Catholic. <laughs> and Helen Gross was going to say, I'm a social Catholic too because I really like the party and I like the dance. <laughs> Helen likes the nightlife. <laughs> That is the type of social I'm looking for. A social Catholic in my mind, and I think in the minds of some others, are those who say I'm Catholic when it's convenient. It's when I want something. It's the people that show up at the rectory door with a little baby and say, Father, can you baptize our child right now? Well, I don't know who you are. But Father, we're Catholic. Just baptize the baby. In other words, we haven't been to church in a while. We have no intentions of going to church after the baby's baptized. But we're doing one of two reasons, three reasons. One, we want to party so we can get some money. Two, it's to get my parents off of my back. Or three, we think it's some sort of a sacri uh, superstitious ritual. We reduce the sacrament to magic. A social Catholic could be someone who is in the public and awful. For instance, I could not begin to name all the new contemporary singers out there. So I've got to go back to the 80s when I was young. And the one that comes to mind is Madonna. And I think most of us would be familiar with Madonna. Madonna was an Italian Catholic, raised in an Italian Catholic home, actually at one point considered a convent. Went to Catholic sister school, learned her prayers, received all her sacraments. But by the time she graduated college or high school, she didn't want any part of this Catholic nonsense anymore. But how often does she use the Catholic card? 
has she come number one hits because she played the Catholic card. She exploited her faith, or what should have been her faith, to make money. So a social Catholic is one that when something bad happens in the church, they're the first to condemn. They're the first to walk away. They're the first to say, I'm embarrassed, I'm insulted, I'm not going to belong to a church like this. Well, they put in very little in the church to begin with. So what do I mean by a sacramental Catholic? Let's look at the word sacrament. Remember the old Baltimore Catechism? The sacrament is an outward sign instituted by Christ to give grace. We are a sacramental people. We gather this morning to celebrate a sacrament. We gather to celebrate the Eucharist. Baptism is a sacrament. Confession is a sacrament. Marriage is a sacrament. We believe that when we celebrate sacraments full of faith with an open heart to God, we're just not practicing our faith. But rather we're living our faith the way that Lisa beautifully read for us the Philippians in our second reading today. Jesus comes alive with inside of us, and we become Christ for others. And when we do that, grace is given to help us overcome the days when we fail and when we fall. So, I believe every one of us here today is a sacramental Catholic. You know, this terrible COVID, you know, we're accustomed to not having pews roped off, but we're accustomed to having this church three quarters full, 85% Some people are afraid because of their health, very understandable. Some people just got lazy because, well, the obligation is lifted, so I don't have to worry, it's not a sin. But isn't that bad too if we think the only reason we have to come to church is so we're going to inflict more sin upon ourselves? So you folks who really work every weekend to be here need to be thanked and you need to be congratulated. However, me included, we can't let that go to our heads. Well, I must be better than them because I know there's nothing wrong with them. They're young and they're vibrant and, you know, they just don't want to go to church on Sunday morning, so they're using code as an excuse, but here I am. You start getting closer to being a social Catholic when you have an attitude like that. Sadly to say, there are some people that the minute you leave church, you're complaining. Glossers preach too long again today. Or occasionally, Glossers didn't preach long enough today because it's raining outside and now i got to go get wet. That's what Helen says all the time. <laughs> See, I'm glad you're sitting there, but you know at least you as a, a, a real bright target. <laughs> There's the people who will, you feel you've got to come to church because something bad's going on in your house right now. Maybe you're fighting with your spouse, maybe you're fighting with your kids, maybe you're fighting with a darn neighbor. I got from the church. When you leave church, you pick up the fight where you left it off. Our gospel reading for today 
challenges us with the question, are you a sayer or you are a doer? It's easy enough to say I'm going to do something and not do it at all. It's easy, and I know we've been using this terminology for hundreds of years, say your prayers. Well, when we say our prayers, we say them with sincerity of heart. You know, there are some times I catch myself I'm going too fast. Sometimes I'm saying them on the fly, or I say them with the TV on. Am I really paying attention to my prayer? Am I really offering my soul to God? You know, confession. Do we frequent the sacrament? You know, I try and go at least once a month. I was just there a couple weeks ago, and another couple weeks I'm going back. Because I am a sinner, just like everybody else. I make mistakes. I commit venial sins, and yes, unfortunately, sadly, I do commit a moral sin every now and then. But do I just go to confession and have a bucket of water dumped on me so I'm clean? Do I try to change my behavior to avoid, as we say, the act of contrition, the near temptations of sin? We need to be doers like Jesus Christ. Jesus did not brag about being the Son of God. He didn't get all fluffed up with his miracles. But rather, he did it in humble simplicity. Today, we ask each the dear Lord to help us have the same attitude as Jesus. Before I, I leave the pulpit, I just want to make one real quick announcement. Uh, as you know, last year when COVID hit, we were about 85 to 90 percent done with our fundraising efforts for the year. We rely on fundraising and we rely on the collection. As I said before, the way that you give is great and I'm very blessed. And I wish we could just live off of the collection, but we can't. As we begin this year, we have to start off with the fundraising season. And there is a little bit of fear and trepidation <clears throat> on my part on can we make our fundraising goals. Our first one is coming up in November. It's the Apple Dumpling Fest. And I believe that every one of us here has a way to get involved. And I just want to encourage it because we really do need to try and make it as successful as possible. We are limited to a big prize table and we'll take as many prizes as we can, but if you want to get together with your family members, a group of friends, an organization, so that you could buy us something that is around $200 or more, so that we can label it as a real, real big ticket item. That would be appealing, and that would be helpful. So if you have the financial means to do it, we'd appreciate it. Well, someone might say, I really love my church, but you know, I can't afford to dish out 200 bucks. And I understand that. I think twice about when I have to dish out that kind of money. But there's other ways. We could make a monetary donation to help us buy the roast beef for the hot roast beef sandwiches. You could make a monetary donation to help us with the flour and sugar and the apples to make apple dumplings. You could make a monetary donation or you could even buy us a couple. We're going to have a lottery ticket board and hopefully we're going to have about a thousand, you know, more dollars in lottery tickets so we'll buy them by the packs. 
You can make a donation of either a gift card or you can give us money so that we can give gift cards to like Home Depot and Lowe's and for Giant and for Boyers and Boscov's and whatever. That would be a help. You're going to say, well, you know, I can't even really afford the 25 bucks. Well, some of us are in good health and we really need some new workers, so maybe you can help in the kitchen serving the hot roast beef sandwiches or helping to make apple dumplings or working the day, two days of the festival, socially distant apart from a lot of people. You're going to say, well, that's nice, but I'm afraid. I don't want to do that. Well, you can make a soup. You can make us a cake. And if you say you can't even do that, put the Blessed Mother in the window and have her face out for that great weekend. And then pray for the good of your parish. I really don't care what you do as long as you do something. I hope and pray that you all love it here. That you find God here. That you're proud to be a sacramental Catholic here. You're proud of your faith and you learn about your faith here. We all need to work it out together to keep this faith strong. And to be the support that we are with other people. And like Jeannie and like Helen that love to be social Catholics. That love to dance, love to sing, love to laugh. That's part of the parish too. So let's take pride in our faith, let's take pride in our parish, and not be sayers, but doers. I believe in one God.
sisters, if my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. Grant us, O merciful God, that this our offering may find acceptance with you, and that through it the wellspring of all blessing may be laid open before us through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you lay the foundation of the world and have arranged the changing of times and seasons. You form man in your own image and set humanity over the whole world in all its wonder, to rule in your name over all you have made, and forever praise you in your mighty works through Christ our Lord. And so with all the angels we proclaim you, as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Blessed Joseph, her chaste spouse, with the blessed apostles, 
The same prayer was ceasing with all the saints who pleased you throughout the ages. We may merit to be co heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ.